Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's your girl, Amaya Desire, and the one and only... Terrell. We are back for Big Go Bell Media, and we are here with the mess of the mess, okay? This <laughs> is called The Ultimatum, and it's another show by Lick, Lick, Nick and Vanessa Lachey, right, um, who did Love is Blind. The perfect and- couple. I'm just here to say this is trash. Like, it's good trash, right? It's like the trash you want to keep watching, but still, it's like I'm 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 totally flabbergasted right now. What did you think about like just this overall concept and the show itself? This show is basically like knowing you shouldn't eat McDonald's, but yet you just gotta get that number three. And then you know paying the consequences after watching. This what this reminds me. This is the fast food of television. You know what I mean? Real quick, easy, and ultimately just not worth it at the end. <laughs> That's what I thought. That's I but it, it was entertaining nonetheless. It was the big rib, you know. Exactly. It's entertaining, but it's definitely just mind blowing. So for those of you who are not aware, the show, the concept of the show is that they bring in six couples ranging from the ages of twenty-four to thirty. Um, one of the people in the couple has issued an ultimatum. They are ready to get married. And so it is either marry me or leave me. And um, once they decide this, you know, they come to the show and then Nick and Vanessa give them the option to date a second person or a different person from one of the other couples, right? To see whether or not you actually want to date somebody else or or stay with your person and to me that's like opening up pandora's box you know how they say like if you go looking for trouble you will find it well i think some trouble was found so do you want to give them the rundown of the couples all right so starting off um we had uh randall and shanique randall being 26 uh shanique being 24. shanique is the one who oh issues the ultimatum in this and you know you know ultimately she's just i don't want to say painted as the villain but she she's the pushy this is where i want to be in life and so you need to be there too you know what i mean like and <laughs> that, that that's what i got from it. that was me personally yeah uh, <laughs> uh, and then we had uh alexis and hunter alexis 25 hunter 28 and they they i'm saying the ages because they make it a point of letting you know how old these people are when they introduce the characters uh, April 23, Jake 26. Uh, we got Ray and Zay. I don't know why they picked two n- r- rhyming name people in the show, but uh, she's 24, he's 25. Uh, Lauren and Nate, uh, she's 26, he's 30. Uh, Colby, who's 25, and Madeline, who is 24. So, mess, mess, and more mess. But before I say that, um, so for me, my initial thought in this show was you guys are way too young to be issuing ultimatums. Um, you know, I feel like Nick and Lachey did a money grab with this show. You could have easily gotten people who are in their thirties to have a show like this, where it is more, I won't say, um, common or like, yes, it is more common, but for me, it's about the, it's about the, what's the right word I'm looking for? It's about the common sense, not even the common sense. It's about the smarts. It's about the awareness. It's about you know, having lived a few things and understanding and knowing yourself, they need therapy. This whole entire cast needs therapy. And I'm baffled that they thought that this was going to be, I don't I don't even know what they thought this was gonna be because obviously the premise is based on their own marriage that they, you know, I think, so I believe it was Vanessa, right? Who issued the ultimatum and she gave Nick an opportunity to kind of go out. They chose one other person to date and it ultimately resorted in them deciding that they wanted to be with each other. In the right. in the real world, I like to call it. Well, we, I mean, obviously we, we all know Nick Lachey's history, you know, him being with Jessica Simpson, you know, that all those all those years and then him, you know, Mr. 98 Degrees, you know what I mean? Like, so, right. we, you know, we know we know a lot about his history in the dating world, who he's been with. And like you said, this was there. Like, okay, this is this is what Vanessa did. So ultimately, it worked for us. But of course, you know, they're rich and you know they can survive stuff like that. Um, these are you know just right. We obviously they don't they don't really go into the details of these of everybody's jobs here. Not like Love Is Blind, where like that becomes like an important factor. But like, 
Um, and you know, keep in mind these are also couples that have been together between like a year and a half to two to up to two two and a half years, right? Um, which they, they they picked a specific uh, couple group. So, you know, there's a lot of people. You know, it's it's only, um, I, I guess I'm not saying it's like a set timeline you, before you give somebody an ultimatum, but you know, in the real world, an ultimatum is just like that person just ultimately walks. But that's that's just yeah. Real. I mean, I think it was interesting that everybody here, like you said, has been in it a year and a half, two years, and I feel like that's still such a very premature time in your relationship. Right. especially if you don't know who you are so for me i feel like a lot of them need to have moments with themselves to understand like what i'm asking for is either very important or it's just me being childish and petty because there was a lot of pettiness and childish behavior oh, with the entire cast and so i'm very confused like why do we think this is okay i really just consider these kids kids they are babies except for the one who is you know the 28 and a 30 year old because you've lived a little you've seen some things probably been in at least two solid relationships but these other ones a lot for a lot of them it's their first relationship and i just feel like i feel bad for those of them who are ultimately in this space where they feel forced to say yes I mean, yeah, I mean, I, you don't want to lose this person that you're with, that you've put this time into. And, you know, for some people, you, you're going to tell that person what they want to hear just to keep it keep it going, you know, regardless. of. But but we see some of these people that have been given an ultimatum, they're still hesitant. Like, you know, it's not on the point where, um, like, yeah, I'm just going to say, yeah, just because I don't want to lose them. They, they actually put in some thought into this, like, okay, I really do want to see what else is out there, which is what this opportunity, this experiment is providing. Yeah, I think so. I, I think it's just, like I said, you know, uh, it's interesting, the show itself, I feel like maybe they had good intentions. They needed older people. They needed people who had been in relationships three right. to four years, because that's when you start to know, like, this is your person or this isn't your person. Um, mm -hmm. I do think that it's very interesting that as we get to know these personalities, we can see who is and who's in it for a marriage and who's in it for a wedding ring and a wedding dress, right? Um, and also, as far as men are concerned, those of them who are only in it because they don't want somebody else to have the woman that they're with. So I think it's a lot of selfishness in this cast. Um, and so I think that they are just doing each other a disservice by even just considering this nonsense. Um, so. You know, we've seen a lot happen, um, and I'm just almost interested to see uh, how this how this ends up. Now, you know, like, like we said earlier, they end up with different people. So based on like personalities of who we get to know, I'm wondering like who do you think is going to survive as an as as an original couple before we get to see like who we think will be good together. That's I mean, it's it's interesting. I mean, because I mean. I'll, I'll... I don't want to say that like race plays a big role in this, but a lot of people do flock to what they feel comfortable with, what they're used to. And I think this, this particular group does give a good interest and opportunity to a, a variety uh, to see like, you know, is it, you know, is it just, you know, are they, is it the personalities? Is it race? Is it a body type? Because like I said, there's a good variety of different people that they get to choose from in this little dating pool that they, they've created. Um, but you know originally like i said when it came to like like randall i feel like because like he's such a reserved guy maybe like i feel like he would have paired well with ray um hmm. if, if i had to think about that because she's also real like she's outgoing and reserved but she's they have similar personalities and i feel like they would have they would have they would pair well okay. if, I, if i was guessing okay okay um i think i can actually see that i'm not i'm i'm not surprised you chose that but i am kind of surprised i guess based on some of the other things i feel like maybe randall specifically just wanted to try something completely different and new right. um but i do think that um that's a good choice though him and ray are a good choice i think april is a very interesting character um she is all like all bark and bite. <laughs> you know what she wants. She she does, but she's also not she's not gentle. Um and so I feel like sometimes um you know it's all it's all about how you say something, not what you say, right? So so that would be my take. And so I think that she probably would have done um 
better had she just talked a little bit nicer to just people in general, not not anybody in particular. Um, but I think for April, I would choose, I would choose probably Nate for for April. Um, I think that he's the older. Okay, the older guy. Yeah, yeah, the older guy. He's because he's on a path of knowing like himself. Um, and I think that he would be able to inst- inst- instill boundaries and like a, a, um, a different kind of like, I think that she wouldn't be able to walk all over him, you know, not that she does that to Jake, but I feel like there's some parts of her that are so intense, um, that sometimes it kind of comes off a little, you know? Strong. Yeah. And Nate, and Nate was also the one that, uh, wanted children too. Um, in the situation, he he wanted to have kids, um, and I think that was a big thing with April too. She she wanted to have children. She wanted to get married and have children, obviously as well. Right, right, yeah. So that, yeah. that was definitely a good choice on that on that parent. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for Alexis, I think Alexis wouldn't wouldn't do well with anybody here. Quite frankly, <laughs> no. Um, uh, and, I, and, and and not a not a spoiler or anything, but she says it herself frequently. That she she wouldn't pair well with anyway because I mean like she she's like a made for one person type personality like uh, yeah as you, as you get to know her through the show she 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 is annoying like she <laughs> super annoying and she really only thinks about herself and you know she says that she's in it she she wants to be at a place where her husband could take care of her she uh-huh. she doesn't want to have to work she wants to she wants the other person to make more money than her right. So, you know that's a, that's a big burden to put on somebody. You know, day one, like yo, like we just met. You gotta make you gotta make a hundred k. People do it all the time. You know, I feel like this this show also allows you to have conversations outside of you know the couples here, but just with friends and people that you might potentially be interested in, just to see what is important to you and what really matters and what you can work on and compromise on. Because I think that that's one thing that I saw throughout this entire cast is that the compromising between the couples wasn't really compromising. It was like me giving you what you wanted to hear just simply to kind of get to where I, you know, you wanted to be. So I think that was this, that, that was a little interesting. Um, so we've done, you said, so we paired um, Randall and, Sh- and uh, Ray, Randall and Shay. I said Randall and Ray, yeah. <laughs> Randall and Ray, okay. And then I paired April with Nate. Um, we paired Alexis with Hunter because that's, that's, Clearly, we just couldn't see her being with anybody else. Um, what about Maddie? Who do you think Maddie would have been good with? Maddie, Maddie came. Maddie comes into this with the she's not ready. Uh, she feel like I mean she, I mean she loves the guy, but she she still wants to know what's out there. You know what I mean? She she definitely wants to try something else. You know what I mean? She she's she's going. She wants to try a free sample with ice cream before she buys it. So. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't want to say Zay because just the way he is. I mean, Zay, Zay's kind of kind of aggressive. Seems like he kind of only think about himself. Uh, I don't, I don't know. That's, that's that's a tough that's a tough choice. Who else I would pair her with? I think I would. Um, I would pair Maddie with um, with Hunter. Hmm. Okay. Because I feel like Hunter is is like, um, well, well, I mean, I can't. Uh, well, yeah, I kind of paired April with Hunter already, but I feel like Maddie would be good with Hunter, just because he he does have that because he's older, so he has that effect of like, kind of, just settling people down. Does that make sense? Like calming people down, like right. But like, that's what I was saying too. I, I, I say Zay just because Madeline only appears to only want to be here to have to still have fun. Oh, she, right, she has right, no right. intent of settling. And I feel like that's where Zay is, and you know, with the nightclub life that you know what I mean. Like he works at the club or whatever. He goes out. He seems like a party guy. And she, like I said, she 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 expresses that she she needs to express herself physically and emotionally. And he seems right. like the type of guy that would be down for that. Right. Yeah. I mean. All right. So. Okay. So Zay and Maddie. That's a pair. So, um, Kobe and who else do we have left? We have Kobe and Lauren left. Essentially, Kobe and Lauren mm. and um, Jake and 
Oh, that's, yeah, Jake and Alexis. If we could pair people with different people. Yeah, Jake and Alexis, and then uh, Lauren and Kobe. What what do you think about either of those two? I'm going to say Kobe and April just because, like, they're the ones that gave their partners the ultimatum in this. Mm -hmm. So them being, you know, having a line goals, maybe they will pick up a little bit more on each other. Um just just to see like hey, this is something that we both wanted less you know if if i pick a person that is thinking the same way that i am maybe that you know that'll work out better than somebody that's kind of straying away from ultimately what i what i want in the end so i, I don't know I, I think they will work well together also think that because they aren't really on each other's radar that possibly they would they would come together a little bit more right and i actually think you're right about that i mean this entire process i would assume that people who gave the ultimatum would uh, would pair with people who gave the ultimatum but as we notice that there are less men who gave the ultimate ultimatum as you know compared to the women who gave them so right. it would it would throw the dynamic off a little bit so of course you know the viewers would just have to wait and see who ends up together <laughs> um but overall you know i think that as far as the original couples who came together who's going to leave together i think that um i don't see um Maddie and Kobe staying together. I just feel like we've learned too much about why they shouldn't be together. Um, and also Ray and Zay. I don't. I don't want them to be together. Um, <laughs> it's just a, a, a shit show. Um, and probably Randall and Shanique. I, I, I am. I am curious. Um, just. Just like I said, a lot of the problems that these couples of coming into this show with how they were even able to last over two years a year you know what i mean like what was getting them through like i feel like a lot of people sometimes just like they just love the idea of being in a relationship but they don't want to do the work and they just try to sweep it under the carpet and ignore everything that's going on yeah and, that you know and then you know like i said eventually that other person will get to a place that that other person isn't like of course marriage and you try to throw them that question it's just like yeah that's that's not where we at you know what i mean so let's let's not pretend like this is where we are and and, and get married and have the party and then we go back to what we were doing beforehand it just doesn't yeah. work for everybody. it's not a reset button right you know I, mean? I agree so. that it was literally a lot of a lot of these couples if not all of them were sweeping a lot of things under the rug like i said mm -hmm. in my initial statement they all need therapy um, I think that there's a lot to be discovered and talked about. I feel like some of them may have felt overshadowed by the partner in the relationship who, mm -hmm. who was more vocal about what they wanted. And so if you don't speak up, then it is a, a very large chance that you're going to end up being overlooked and overpowered in a sense, because now your needs are not being met and your wants aren't being met either. So I think that's the thing that we have to consider when we are when we are in relationships in general um so that to me overall just you know it, it's it's a lot of respect. like i said for them to be so young and to be setting also at such a young age and the idea of marriage and kids you know when this is 2022 and people are doing things very different now so right. there is really I mean, no rush. Every, everything is so accelerated now especially especially in our our age like you said like everybody we, we beat people online and, you know, a lot of the conversation and stuff is had through text. I mean, even if you aren't physically with each other now, a lot of this is already like pre whatever. Like when you read somebody's bio, you can see, you know, exactly what they want right there. You know what I mean? So what do you, what do you think is an appropriate amount of time before or what do you think is, you know, because most most people going into a relationship before they become, you know, officially girlfriend or whatever. They tell you this is what I want going into it. If we're dating, this is what I want. What do you think is an appropriate amount of time before you say, hey, I'm, I'm ready to get married? I mean, and again like when people do those surprise marriages i always think that's completely ridiculous because that has to be a conversation that you do before you risk your risk yourself you know proposing in the middle of a restaurant or in the middle of town square or something like that so what do you think is, is the appropriate amount of time before you ask somebody hey let's let's talk about marriage well, to me my thing is one at the age that i'm currently in right now because i'm in my 30s um I feel as though there's a conversation that you have with your partner in regards to marriage and then yeah. a conversation in regards to marriage with that 
particular person, if you get what I'm saying, right? So we can have a general conversation on what we would like marriage to look like, but that conversation is not the same conversation as what I want marriage to look like with that person. Because right. personality wise, we have to take a lot of things into consideration. How am I willing to compromise? Do I understand you? How do we communicate? What's your love language? You know, how are you when you're angry? And so to me, I feel like once you've dated a certain person, um, and you know yourself. So uh, of course you could be 24 and you could know yourself. We know a lot of mature people in their twenties. What I'm saying is if you're not self mature already and you go into a relationship and then you're asking for a, a proposal, it just seems like a shit show waiting to happen. Now, I'm not saying that there are not some immature ass 30 year olds, 40 and something year olds, 50 something year olds because there are. So what I'm being very clear about is it's not the age, it's the mental maturity that needs to happen before you have a conversation. But for me, I feel like once you are two mentally mature individuals, I don't think that two years is unreasonable. It's when you're not mentally mature that I think two years is unreasonable because these couples are clearly not, they're not there. You know what I mean? They have individual things that they need to work through. And that presents a problem when you're trying to work through yourself and be in a relationship. It's very hard. If you do the hard work outside of the relationship and then go back to be in a relationship, that's different, you know, because you're still constantly growing and learning yourself. But to have to really understand who you are, to learn all your quirks, your ins and outs, the things you absolutely need, the things you absolutely are know, the things you want, that takes a lot of work and energy. I don't really feel like you know who you truly are until you hit like 37, 38, you know what I mean? And that's still, and I'm still learning myself and I haven't even gotten there yet. So, you know, I, I think it just, it depends on the person. Um, so for me, as long as you're mentally mature, I think two to three years is, is not a bad, right. not a bad time frame. I um I think it's a, a lot of the insecurities of like the of the what if, and you know what what could have what could what potentially could I have done with somebody else? Are you are you everything that I could have had? You know what I mean? And I don't want to say like everybody just settles on the person that they're with because they they found one thing and they held on to it, but. With this particular show, a lot, of, a lot of this is, you know, I don't feel like I make enough money, you know, to se financially secure us and our family. I don't feel like, you know, once we get married, I want, I don't want to have kids right off the break. I, I, I want us to be able to travel and do this. And there's, and there's a lot of these questions. And ultimately, just do I trust you overall? You know, going into this, right? Um, so it, it's, it's a lot of like those insecurities with a lot of these people, and just ultimately just not being ready. And like you said, they, they say that using the finance thing is a crutch, but it's, it's real. It's, it's something, especially now it's real. Like people lose their jobs every day. You know, are, are you ready to hold me down if I was to lose a job right. or, or whatever, you know, are, are you there for me? And you see like through these couples that they aren't, they over stupid stuff. They, they ready to go. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, this, this will be a test of what life so potentially could be, you know, in a short period of time and you ain't ready to do this. So yeah. You know, yeah. We'll I think that um, there are so many different dynamics that this this show shows us as far as individual work that needs to be done, individual growth that does happen, mm -hmm. parental meddling, um, you know, friends who opinionated friends, you know what I mean? So there's so many different takeaways from this show that we could comment on because it just gave us that much to go with, you know, essentially um i think that the show like i said is messy it's not necessarily oh, a, a show that i mean i wouldn't be jumping in line to get on the show even if i were in a relationship i think that it would just ruin the work that you put in and i'm not really sure what the purpose was you know and 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 yeah i'm okay if they only do one season of this like i am good yeah i don't i don't, I don't need to see more of this but because yeah. you know people like the shock value and netflix you know it's all about them ratings this is going to get another season yeah this is, good. This is probably going to be tried somewhere else but uh, i'm i'm i am curious as to how this was the able to be so self-contained because in real in real life if somebody was to do this people would not be this calm they, especially because they they take these couples and you're seeing the other couple dating the person that you're with and you know the concept is that you have to live with said person for three weeks and you can't see the other person at all Right. You know what I mean? Like I said, they're just building on top insecurities that these people might already have had. Mm -hmm. So, no, no, I don't think anybody would realistically be, be able to do this. No. 
Yeah, <laughs> it's a strong no for me. Um, I also, can, all these people they they real life counterparts are trash. Yeah, <laughs> just I trash. To see what the viewers think. Um, please feel free to leave your comments and your thoughts and let us know. Um, I think that you know my final thought is this show is <laughs> probably meant to uncover issues versus um giving couples the opportunity to work on themselves to move forward i think that uh it was more of an eye opener than anything for majority of the couples yeah whereas though like you know love is blind is a concept where you are falling for somebody sight unseen um and just purely on the conversation and what you're feeling through the wall and you know you you deal with you know that person and you figure out this is still something that you want to deal with later on where these are already established couples that you know you throw a pebble into the you know to this glass house you know will it shatter if if you know certain things get tested so you know and, and eventually will that person get what they want in the end and that's mm -hmm. that's the question that this this show definitely brings and you know but you get to see all the trashy components of each individual person as we go through the journey so. yes yeah so sit tight buckle up for the ride and when you guys are finished with the season feel free to come back and give us your thoughts your comments let us know what you feel who did you like who didn't you like what couples do you want to stay together what new mm -hmm. couples would mm -hmm. you like to see um and we can't wait to see you until next time so that reunion <laughs> yes, reunion time yes absolutely